Welcome to Rag Rugs by Erin. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the lost art of braid in rugs. Um, this art was lost um, mostly at the end of uh, World War II, um, I believe, because people weren't didn't need to conserve on scraps or material. They could get new things, and that was uh, an exciting time to not have to do that. But uh, I spent a lot of time researching, trying to find out how to do this, and I now uh, feel like I've learned enough and taught myself enough to be able to show you as well. And I know many of you were waiting for this video. So um, this is made out of jersey or t-shirt material. As you can see, these two are t-shirts. And this is more jerseys, old shirts of mine. And the problem with that, um, though there's more, more interest there, you can see that you'd have to fold this in order to keep the design. On this one, this has a, a blue pattern, which I don't fight that on that. Okay. This is why this is called a braid in rug. It's not a braid where it's a braid and then you sew it. You see how it's interlocked and intertwined right into it as you go along. You do not have to sew as you go. You sew just a tad to get it started and that's it. You could even hand sew it. Okay, let's quickly go over this and then we're going to do another episode that is going to show you how to start one. But this is just a general overview. Okay, you know I like a good pair of scissors. Always important the tools that you'll need. Here is um, a tapestry needle. It has a tip that isn't real sharp. Sometimes they call them yarn needles. Don't get a plastic one. I find that that does not work well. And as you can see, well, I'm not doing so hot. But here you go. How easily that is, is to braid. Also, you can use a safety pin. On the original ones that I saw, they had teeny, teeny safety pins. Um, this is a little bigger because that's what I had. So you could use all safety pins and try it that way and decide if you want to go ahead and switch to a needle. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for just a moment and show you the reason why. As you watch my other videos, I always use sheets. I really like using sheets. But um, my first ones that I tried with sheets... See how it's puckering and buckling, and I could not get this thing to, it did it several times, to lay down and to be smooth, and it's just, to come around these corners, there's not enough give. Okay, so this is why I stopped struggling with it. More sewing involved, pretty colors, but just a, kind of an aggravating experience for me. So I have put that to the side, and I have now experimented and come up with using t-shirts, which many people are using t-shirts to make um, rag rugs anyways. So let me quickly show you um, a couple things and get you started and show you how to braid in. And the second video um, episode of this, I will show you how to actually get it started. Okay, first thing, I want to show you how the ends all have to be different lengths. Okay, none of these end in the same spot. You can't use bowl, uh, balls, as you've seen other videos where they'll make the yarn um, out of the t-shirt and have balls of them. You won't be able to do that with this. You have to braid it as you go and um, add on lengths. And if it gets too long, it gets too mixed up and it's a, a difficult situation. You don't want them to end all in the same place because it will make a place where they're all joined and it will um, be too much pulling in that area. It won't be strong enough. So you need to make sure you're staggering that. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make a stitch now and how this is. Okay, so this is going to be, we're going to name them. This is one, two, three, and four. With the outside one, which is number one, you are going to go under the one directly next to it. I'm going to do it slow. You can do it fast once you figure this out. You don't have to be so without. The next one you're going to go over. So this is over three and under four. So you see how this is? It went under, over, and under this one. Now this is where you are going to intertwine it back in. You're going to go into the next stitch, once in a while you have to skip one, and you slide it through. And now you can see why you can't use a ball. You have to just, you're going to pull it, not too much, but just so it's laying flat. Okay, now this takes the number one position. See how there's four? This is now, it's always under, over, under, and then 
enter. Let's see if the cameraman can see that. And then you go into the rug. That's where you're interlocking it. Pull it through. We're going to do a couple more of those. Okay. Again, there's four strands. The farthest one out, under, over, under, and then pull it through the rug. It's very simple as far as that goes. It's just over and over the same type of situation. And it braids it in. Okay. One more time. Under. Over. Under. And then back into the next one. When you're going to be coming around the corners, you're going to have to sometimes repeat into the same hole in order to get all the way around. Okay. Mr. Cameraman, do you think you got that or do you think I should do another stitch? I think you got it. Okay. So, I'm going to show you one other thing. How to make, connect them together. You could, of course, sew them or you could do it this way, the way I've taught you in another video, how to do it without sewing. I have decided that I'm going to change this one, okay, and I'm going to go with this. This is a cut-off piece of a t-shirt that we've been saving and collecting. This one didn't happen to have any seams, so I have to cut it to make a strip. Okay. Here's the one I'm going to be connecting it to. Changing colors. You fold it in half, and you make a little snip. This is the way it's going to look. If you watch my other videos, I have one with sheet yarn that goes into much more detail. You're going to take the color or the next strip that you're going to attach. You're going to fold it over just like you did this. Put a little snip. There's your hole. You're going to take the one that's attached to the rug the one that's attached to the rug and you're going to slide through the one you're going to be added into this hole. You're going to take the other end of the one you're adding and slide it back through its original end. Pull it through. Because there's so much give, you've got to be a little careful, a little bit more delicate with this and not yank it too hard. The sheets can tolerate quite a bit more pulling than the jersey can. So you kind of pull it and see how it's now intertwined and just give it a little tug. Flatten it out and there, no sewing. It's a great, great way to do it. I'm going to show you one more time with the same color. I folded it over. See how that's folded over? Put a little snip. I grab my same color because I'm continuing on. Something that's interesting, this one had a seam. I went ahead and left the seam. I didn't undo the seam because if you're going to sew it together, why not have their beautiful seam that they've already done? Okay, so I didn't even bother cutting that apart. I just cut one seam off so it was a strip. You take the one that you're going to attach doesn't matter which side. Put a little snip. Again, see? Okay. The one that is attached to the rug already, the one that is going to be added. The one that's going to be added is fed through the one that's already attached to your rug. You feed it through and take the end the, of the other end of the one you're attaching and feed it through the hole. Okay, and then pull it gently. You have to be careful. And now you have it attached again. Okay, so this is a general overview of a braid in rag rub. Join me for part two, and I'll show you how to get one started. Thank you. I hope this has been informative. I haven't found anything else like this on YouTube, so I'm hoping that you'll uh, 
enjoy this and it will give you another um, fun activity to do in your spare time and uh, recycling some of your old things. Alright, thank you.